Now, let's get back to, to where we were. And I took up a lot of time doing that. Okay, so we were talking about uh, the Lord God being the creator and sustainer uh, of all things. So we did do this. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're right here. Now, we're probably only gonna get to this one verse because I used up a lot of time to, to get uh, the simple stuff. Okay, so God, the creator and sustainer of life. Let's look at this, let's break this verse down. God, who, who made the world? God, who made the world and everything in it, again, the world, right? Heavens, earth, you see, I want to keep saying that because there's new people that joins us, right? That, that watch these videos and they have no idea what we're talking about. If you've been with us for a while, obviously you know what I'm talking about. But there are uh, other people, folks, that, that joins us. So these are rams. All right, then you have heaven out here. So when God says, I made the world, what is he talking about? This is the world. Both of these, all what you see right there. That's the world. And he created everything in it. What's in it? There are angels. There are humans. There are animals. There are plants. There's flowers, there's moon, there's a moon, there's a sun, there's stars, everything in it. That's basically what it said. Okay, since he is and always will be, it's, it's a current uh, present participle here, uh, present tense verb, I should say. He is Lord, and he's Lord of heaven, and he's Lord of earth. He doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. Folks, please, God is not in your church building. What about this Lord? What did you say? He does not dwell in temples made with hands. So, if you are going to a church building, the question is, is God there? No. When you get there, God shows up. Now, of course, God is everywhere. But what I'm telling you, he isn't sitting in some building, sitting there waiting on people to show up. No, folks. God lives inside of his children in the presence of his spirit. And he's also in heaven. All right. So, God who made the world. Well, wait a minute. I thought the other verse said it was Jesus who made the world. Through whom he made the world. Whom? Jesus Christ. It's Jesus who upholds all things by the word of his power. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things. Wait a minute. You can't have two verses saying different things. Well, it's not saying different things. The man, Jesus Christ, is God. This person he's making reference to is God. Who made all things? Jesus did. Then he's God. If he's the creator, he's God. He's only one. He made the word. Everything in it says he's Lord of, Lord of all. He don't dwell in temples made with hands. All right, so you're going to church. You're not going meet God. Why? Because he's not there until you get there. You can meet God in a car. You can meet God in a restaurant. You can meet God in your house. You can meet God anywhere. Why? Because he's everywhere. And if you are a believer... In the spirit of God, he's living inside your body with you. Nor, nor is God, that he here is Lord and a reference to God. Nor is God worshipped. Okay, 
How am I worshiping God? You said, I am serving God. So folks, service is worship. God says, I am not worship with men's hands. No. As do I need something from you. <laughs> what is he talking about? Back in these days, this time, most people had idols. What kind of idols? Idols, little gods made of wood, stone, gold, whatever they did. <clears throat> so that's what Paul is making a reference to within his context and his setting. Most people would worship their gods. They would carry their little gods around them, right? And they would move the god from one location to another location and all this stuff. And they would set up temples for these gods. That's what he was talking about, really, about this temple. And what would they do? They would go into these temples. They would set food in front of the statue. They would set water. That's what he's talking about. He says, hey, man, if that's, if any kind of service you think you are doing for me, no, I don't need anything. From anyone. Why? Because I am the self existing one. Since he, God, gives life to all and breath in all things. Folks, you're not giving anything to God. The only thing you can give to God is what? Is due, God. What's due? True worship. True worship comes from a heart that love God. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Obey me. Do what I commanded you to do. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Obey me. Go feed my children my word. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. Go do what I told you, Peter. Obey me. What did you tell me, Lord? Go give out the gospel. Now, the question is, do you love God? That's really the question. That's what it boils down to. Do you love God? The God of the Bible. Do you love Jesus Christ? If the answer to that is no, then God isn't looking for you to obey him. As a matter of fact, you can't obey him. Why? Because you don't love him. If you love him, you will obey him. That turns into service. That in and of itself is not worship. What's worship? Your love. Your love for God is true worship of God. Yes, you can express that love by going to church. You can express that love by looking at uh, teaching videos. You can express that, that love by prayer. You can express it in many, many ways. But it is all coming out of a heart that loves him. Think about it this way. Even if you don't have children, you were a child at one point. Love is expressed from a parent to a child. How? You can see it in many ways. They take care of the child. They love the child. All this different stuff. That's what happens. So, you know, we show this love 
all the time. And that's what happens. You show your love for God, how? Through your obedience and your submission to his will. All right. So God says, listen, man, I don't need anything from you. Nothing. He said, oh, yeah, God need my prayer. Look, I mean, God don't need your prayer. What was he doing before you were created? Who, who was giving God prayer then? <laughs> okay, listen. And he, God, made from how many blood? One. We are all related. One blood. Doesn't make a difference what the external look like, okay? God says from one blood, every single nation. How many God? Everyone. Every nation. You and I are all related. Every single person on the planet is related. No, you're not my first cousin or my parent, but God said I only need one man, one woman, and everybody came from that. All right? Of what? Men. The only creatures is the natural creatures God allowed to reproduce. The natural creatures. The spiritual creatures can't. Angels are talking about. To dwell. And where do the natural creatures dwell? They dwell on the face of the earth. Now, what does that mean? That means you can't go live out in outer space. I don't care how many rockets you send up there. You can't live there. Why? Because God says, I want you to be on the earth. You can't go live on Mars. You can't go live on Pluto or Saturn or Juniper or any of these other planets that we see or some star or the moon. You definitely ain't going to the sun. You cannot live there. Why not? God says no. God says, I declare that what? Men. If you, mankind, they must dwell. Folks, this is a decree. This is the decree by God. Okay, how smart men get, they will never move to the moon. Oh, you can go visit. Okay. You send something to Mars. Oh, okay. It's discoverable to you. Go live there. I bet you can. Why not? Because God says, I appointed that you live on the earth. If you can go stay on Mars or the moon or anywhere else outside of earth, then this word isn't true and God isn't God. You are God. 